Hi, this is a video on the basics of uh, introduction to temperature, basically. I'm following the order of Young and Friedman's University Physics. So this section, the beginning of their chapter uh, on uh, thermodynamics, uh, is temperature and thermal equilibrium. So let's get started. So what is the study of thermodynamics? Well, thermo means heat, dynamics has to do with, with uh, motion. Thermodynamics is the study of energy transformations involving heat mechanical work and other aspects of energy and how these relate to the properties uh, of matter. Okay, so uh, we're, we're primarily thinking of heat exchanges uh, and as they relate on work and, and other aspects of energy. Okay, so what is temperature? Well, we kind of, we kind of have a, we have a layperson's understanding of temperature. You know, I'm, I have a fever, you know, I have a temperature. What we mean is my, my body temperature is, exceeds that of, of normal with 98.6. So on a macroscopic scale, what we mean a big scale, you know, ordinary kind of language, temperature relates to things we call hot and cold. Of course, it's all pretty relative, right? Um, it's, it's very experiential, you know. Um, uh, in, you know, if you turn on uh, the bathtub and you have it, you know, all the way over, you know, probably it's going to feel really, really hot if you get in the bathtub. Uh, but you know, if it's winter, you know maybe you know, maybe it'll cool down. Or we understand hot and cold. These are things that we understand. Now we measure it using a thermometer. Uh, a thermometer can can measure this temperature uh, in more than one way. Uh, so like uh, volume uh, expands with temperature, uh, and so we can we can use the volume as an indirect measure, or uh, the pressure of a gas. Um, temperature makes the pressure go up, or the electrical resistance of a, of a substance goes down as the temperature uh, goes up. So these are all kinds of ways of measuring temperature. Temperature relates directly to the kinetic energy of the molecules. Um, if we get a, go on a microscopic scale, uh, the more the, the molecules are vibrating and bumping into each other, the greater the temper, temperature is. So even though temperature you know, from an everyday experience, uh, we kind of know what we're talking about. What are we really talking about? We're really talking about the kinetic energy of the of the microscopic uh, molecules. Okay, so measuring temperature. Measuring temper temperature usually is uh, is often not usually, but it's often based upon what we call thermal equilibrium. So if you have something something, so if you have a hot water. Uh, in the bathtub, but it's really cold outside. So the the tub might actually be rather cold, um, and you put the hot water in, and as it sits there, the coldness of the air and the tub, uh, there, there's an exchange that takes place. What it what it's really is, it's an exchange of energy. The slower moving, the lower kinetic energy tub and air um, move up faster as the heat energy comes out of the uh, out of the tub. Meanwhile, um, as that energy spreads, the kinetic energy of the water uh, gets distributed, it slows down, and so the, 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 um, the, the temperature of the water goes down and the temperature of the surrounding air and tub goes up, and eventually it will reach an equilibrium where the tub and the water are at the same temperature. And so we often, uh, when, when you take a thermometer, uh, and you put it under your tongue, um, if we still do that, um, the, uh, the thermometer or the substance in the thermometer is eventually going to reach an equilibrium with the temperature of your body. Uh, the, some of the heat from your body is going to go into the, uh, we used to use mercury, we don't do that anymore because mercury is really bad if it gets in your body. And so, um, you know, if a thermometer were to break, the mer mercury would it would be harmful, uh, so we don't use mercury anymore. Uh, but but the idea when you used to have a mercury thermometer, the mercury would gain the uh, kinetic energy, uh, the energy from your body in, in the form of heat, um, and then uh, eventually there'd be an equilibrium. Uh, and so basically, the, the 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 measure of the temperature on the thermometer is uh, had reached equilibrium. That's why you used to have to hold it in your mouth for like five minutes. Um, so that it could reach equilibrium. Now we have all kinds of 
other devices that don't uh, don't take that long to do it. But but measuring temperature often uh, depends on uh, uh, the the measuring item reaching thermal equilibrium um, with the thing it's it's trying to measure. So uh, when when the interaction of the two systems there's no longer change happening, that's when they've reached equilibrium. An insulator is something that tries to keep interaction between two things from happening. So when we put uh, when we put ice in a cooler and we put you know lunch meat in the cooler and we close it. The, 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 the goal of the cooler is to insulate um, the, the, the stuff inside the cooler from the, the heat of the outside world because, again, everything wants to go to thermal equilibrium. The heat on the outside wants to um, reach equilibrium with the coldness on the inside. And, of course, this will happen eventually. Uh, we, there's no such thing as a perfect insulator. We, we may talk about an ideal uh, insulator, but it, it simply doesn't exist. Eventually, there's going to be an equilibrium, and the ice is going to melt inside of the cooler, and it'll reach the same uh, temperature as the the outside. But the we can hold it off um, long enough for it not to not to happen. Now, a conductor permits thermal interaction uh, to take place um, uh, more easily, um, and so if we want the coldness, you know. Uh, or the the heat to transfer, then we're going to use something that's more of a conductor uh, of heat that is going to permit thermal interaction uh, more easily. Okay, so we end this video with the zeroth law of thermodynamics. It's the zeroth law because uh, they came up with it after they'd already come come up with the first and second. You know, they'd already come up with the other laws of thermodynamics, but this seemed very fundamental, uh, and so they called it the zeroth. Wasn't that clever? Um, so the idea is, is that if A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and if B is in thermal equilibrium with C, then by the transitive property of thermodynamics, I just made that up, then A and C are also in equilibrium with each other. Um, this seems to make a certain amount of common sense. So two systems are in thermal equilibrium if and only if they have the same uh, temperature. Well, that's the first section of this chapter on thermodynamics uh, to get some of the basic concepts on the table.